Welcome back to another Distro Wars here on Switch to Linux. And today we are going to look at two of the best distributions there are. Linux Mint, of course, the old hat, uh, long term, let's make a perfect distribution for people coming from Windows and switching to Linux. And then the runner up, Farron OS, which is just taken the world by storm, which is such an amazing distribution as well. I love this distribution. And uh, it has a lot more functions and features. It is, this is now, it was based, it was based on Linux Mint. It is now based on Ubuntu and running Plasma at its core because that gave him the option to much more easily put in a lot of different functions and features. Some may say there's too many functions and features. I will go ahead and let you be the judge of that. Uh, but what we're going to do is first, let's go ahead and have a look at their websites. And so this is farinos.weebly.com. You can come on over here. You can grab the OS and read a lot about it. Uh, so it's just a very nice, clean, easy to use website, uh, rock solid foundation designed for security and privacy. And uh, really, they do an excellent job. They have a lot of functions and features all open source. Now, you do need to note the ones down here at the bottom. One of these notes, Vivaldi is included in Farron OS, which is not ex uh, completely open source. There's large portions of it that are, but they do have a privacy policy and a EULA. So he does make that very clear on the website as well. So just be aware of that. And why do you do that? Because there are a number of Linux users that love Vivaldi. It's a good choice to have as, a, as an easy option available to you. Now, this is going to be contending with Linux Mint, which is my, uh, my favorite Linux distribution. I'm not going to let that bias get in the way of the review, if at all possible. Uh, but they did just drop uh, just earlier this week, 20.1. This is one of the greatest releases of Linux Mint for a while. Somebody accused me of saying, you always say that. And that's actually not the, not the case. I said uh, in the 19, yeah, maybe hold off on it. Even in the 20, yeah, hold off on a little bit. Uh, just because I needed to see where they were going with things. But this is, they actually are adding new software. They're, they're adding ICE applications by default so you can build in uh, web apps uh, built into the menu, onto the panels, onto the desktop, wherever you want those to be. They have a new hypnotics tool. They've added a lot of extra features that people have been asking for in the Cinnamon desktop, like favorites and things like that. Um, now, the one note on Linux Mint 20.1 is if you are using an AMD Ryzen 5 like I am, there have been some issues going back into the 19.3 branch. And I've experienced these a couple times. I found that Linux Mint 19.3 on the Ryzen processor the Ryzen 2 specifically, or which one do I have? The Ryzen 5 specifically, which is the one I have. There are actually some issues on the kernel that ships with it, which if I remember is 5.4. And they say in their notes, upgrade to 5.8, you should not have any of those problems. So I'm going to do that on my other build that I do run on this computer occasionally. So Linux Mint Cinnamon is out now. Linux Mint has three different versions. They have the Cinnamon, they have the Mate, and they have the XFCE. They all provide effectively the same use. So there is your one downside on Linux Mint is all of them look like the Windows type build. Farron OS gives us options to have alternative layouts in addition. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and boot up Farron OS and uh, when we get that guy booted up, we'll go ahead and have a look at what that looks like. Now, Farron OS is, it appears to be an OEM installer by default. Everything in this is polished from the from the, the top to the bottom. This is certainly one of the most polished Linux distributions. You never see lines of code. Well, I, I take that back. I see this line of code just for a brief second. Uh, but everything else just goes right into, um, uh, just right into, uh, splash screens, uh, logout screens, just everything that looks really nice. And so we land on the desktop. Here we have our uh, here we have our login screen. We're going to go ahead and get logged in over here, and then it's going to land you on the desktop. And I have to say that the the basic default Farron OS configuration I am not a particular fan of, but that's okay because right on the desktop you're going to see the options to change your layouts. So here we have landed on the desktop, and uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the of the default layout configuration. This is the the menu that we have, which is probably my least favorite Plasma menu. Uh, it is modern in that you can search for things. You can see everything laid out like this. So it's not exactly bad. I just personally don't like to look at it. That's a, a pure personal preference type thing. 
we have our calendar and our clocks down here. So very nice polish to it. I'm just not a huge fan of this particular layout. We can see here the default menu. We have the Vivaldi browser. We have the store. We have files. Let's go ahead and boot up the store real quick, see what this guy is going to look like. So it's going to be generating the cache the first time you load it. So this looks like it's going to be the Linux Mint store. We have flat pack options right here. We have our various options that we, we can search for. Let's go ahead and look at uh, Caden Live is the one application I tend to look for. So following the Linux Mint store, we can see very clearly the repo version of Caden Live versus the flat pack version of Caden Live. That's actually pretty good. Now, as far as not liking the desktop layout, that's okay. You can come on over here and double click on your desktop layout icon. And then this guy here is going to boot up an application, which just gives us a few awesome desktop layouts. So the Copertino, this one is more of your Apple type layout. So give it a second here to uh, finish refreshing. So here we have a nice panel, just like we might find on a Mac. We have all of our system tray information up here at the top and uh, everything works out pretty nicely. So literally everything just looks very much, uh, very Mac-like here. Let's go ahead and do this. And then this is our application menu. And I do like this one. This is a, a nice uh, plasma screen. Definitely a little bit different than Mac as you imagine, but very easy to use, very easy to understand. Nice full screen, very good. The familiar, if I remember correctly, I believe the familiar is actually like your Windows 10 layout. And so this guy here is going to have everything laid out like Windows 10, including, uh, look at this, you can trick people into thinking it's actually Windows 10. So you have this option as your, um, as your layout, very familiar. Your Redmond is more of your, your older, your more classic, maybe like your Windows 7 type look. So here we have a little bit smaller panel. Our menu is much more um, Windows 7-esque. Of course, we have our, here's our defaults. Here's our Ubuntu. Here's if you're running like a touch screen or one of the Lenovo flips. So you have a lot of options for the layouts over here as well. Uh, we do have a global theme option as well on the desktop. And uh, this guy here is just going to give us our, uh, I believe this is just going to give us our, our accent colors. So set up our accent colors, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I didn't double check what all those guys are there, but they do have all of the options for, for different things. Oh, maybe it did. Maybe it did. I think it just, oh, it just doesn't get the menus. So it's getting everything else, just not the, the main menu there. We do have a welcome screen. Uh, we didn't see it on the very first time we booted up just because it will only boot up that first time. Oop, I opened it twice. My apologies. So here we are when we get our welcome screen. Uh, we have the ability here. So here is uh, uh, apps, basically repository things and flat packs. We also do have some apps. So it tells you here the uh, uh, snap support is not installed. Would you like to install it? This is a good approach. This is an approach that Linux Mint does not take. Linux Mint is fundamentally against snap packages. While it is possible to enable them and they give you documentation for it. It's not as easy as clicking a button. And um, why is that? Well, if you're new to Linux, Snap is a little bit controversial in some of the things. You either love them or you hate them. And uh, that's all there is to it. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of snaps. I avoid them if at all possible. Linux Mint suits me just fine. But for the people that really do like them and have no problem with them, this is a very nice one quick simple button to enable snap support. Uh, still, Minjaro manages this better than anybody. It's a toggle button. Toggle on, toggle off. Toggle on, toggle off. No big deal. So here we are setting up uh, our snap uh, stuff. So there you go. I, I have no problem with that type of approach. Um, I'm not ever really going to fault a distro for running snaps. I'm just not a huge fan of Ubuntu making snaps the whole, the whole point of them. And so here we are still making some changes there. I am noticing that um, I'd like to get back to the main menu now. Um, maybe I can't. Maybe I'm already on the main menu. Uh, so that's pretty much all we have in, in that system there. Um, it does appear as though the accent colors are not as easy to change as they were in the past. Maybe I'm just missing something. This is actually one of the first times I've looked at Farron since, uh, since they've made their, their switch to Plasma. Uh, I think that's done. 
Oh, it's aborting the snap and saw. It kind of stopped, stopped there on me. So, um, again, you're kind of getting a fresh view of this uh, for me because this is actually the first time I've looked at it on plasma, I think. I can't remember for sure. Uh, one of the notices that uh, that I did see on the system is they do announce that they will update everything automatically. So let's go ahead and pull up this the update manager, though, see what it's doing. So update new ver version is available. That's because uh, it's I think it's using Linux Mint's uh, software manager. And so there is a new version of that out since the the new um, uh the new version has dropped, so it's going to download that. But they do have it set up to do your minor updates automatically, not your major updates. You either love that or you hate that, uh, just letting you know that is an option. So we can see here that there are a lot of updates to do. Now, the time I'm recording this video, I'm recording this on the day they dropped the brand new version. However, um, I got everything prepped up the night before, so I'm still running the older version. So that's why there's so many updates. I intentionally did not want to run updates before running the video. So as far as software installed that has the full suite of software you might need, we have uh, under graphics, we have Krita, which is uh, like an illustrator. Excuse me, that's like a Photoshop. Uh, Inkscape is like Illustrator, my apologies. Uh, we have LibreOffice Draw. Here we have uh, Geary for email, the KDE Connect. This is for connecting your Android phone. We have the Connect SMS to do text messaging off your phone. Um, the, oh, the other option here, Web Browser Manager. This is an awesome tool that Farron OS has built as well. Uh, this guy here, if you don't like Vivaldi, you can come in here and very easily add Google Chrome, Chromium, Microsoft Edge is coming soon. Um, uh, I'm not sure if that's in there or not, and I can't see my comments right now. I was going to ask Farron if, uh, actually Farron, let me know, is, uh, is that in the new version yet or is that still coming? Um, and I'll update you guys on the next part here after a look at the comments between the video clips. Here's Firefox, Brave, Opera, Waterfox, Falcon, and uh, Gnome Web. So you have a lot of options if you don't want to use Vivaldi. Uh, multimedia, we have VLC Cheese. We have the full suite of LibreOffice, Calendar Tools. Here's our basic settings. Uh, everything KDE, we're not going to get into the KDE. That should be mostly the same. So there is, in a nutshell, Farron. Uh, very easy to change your layouts. A lot of cool options. Snap support out of the box, if that's important to you. Of these two, Farron is going to be easier to go. Um, but, uh, of course, I, I got caught on that screen. I looked like it had stopped doing whatever it was doing and closed it accidentally. Just don't do that. Flat pack support uh, out of the box uh, and everything else. So there is Farron. Let's go ahead and uh, close it down. I want to see if the closing animations are just as good as the boot up animations are. Should oh, give us some nice sound there. And then here we have some closing animations and then it's going to close down. So here we are on the Linux Mint login screen. So this guy here is the Cinnamon version, and this is the brand new shiny version of Linux Mint that just came out. This is 20.1, and there's a lot of really good features and, and such in this guy. I just need to move my monitor around a little bit there. You can see it better. All right, so now this guy here, the Mint Welcome, is going to show up every time you boot up the computer until you uncheck this box here. Not a lot has changed here, but Linux Mint does listen to its users, and so they've given us a couple of neat options. One of these is now we have a quick accent color. Of course, the default for Linux Mint is green, but you can come in here and select different options. So here is, um, uh, here is your orange and your dark versions. So here everything throughout the desktop from the icons to the menu, everything now changes to whatever your accent color is right out of the box. So a lot of people have been asking for that type of feature. We also have the more modern layout, which is more like a Windows 10 approach, and we have the more traditional. I like a hybrid of the two. I actually like the size and the icon styles and things of the modern. I just don't like the functionality. So you can actually edit and tweak the panel and turn the functionality into the old traditional. But because if you click on the, on the traditional layout one, you'll see that it behaves like it, but the panel's a little bit smaller. We can, of course, come in here and we can edit the panel and make the panel a little bit larger and, and things like that. But I, I actually like the design look. We'll do that. There we are. So I actually like the design look of the older style. 
uh, or of the newer style, but I just like the function of the old. So we do still have the options to do either one within Linux Mint. We have our system snapshots, which is like your old Windows Restore. We have a driver manager right here, the update manager, system settings, software manager. Now let's go ahead and start with the software manager because they are using the same software manager here that, that Farron is using. And uh, the Linux Mint team has created this guy. So uh, this is a slightly newer version than the one we had on the last video, although I'm pretty confident that this will be the same now. Uh, so here's your, uh, again, your flat packs. Uh, we have everything else is going to be the same. The only difference is on Linux Mint, you're not going to be able to install snaps out of the box. There are some settings and some options you can do and to change that. And the reason is Linux Mint is fundamentally against the model for snaps because they require a proprietary distribution route. That's why the, the snaps themselves are not proprietary, uh, but uh, the, the distribution route is, and that's really what they have uh, an issue with. And as soon as Canonical opens that up, they will have no problem supporting it. We also have our update manager down here. Uh, again, we're going to see the same thing we saw before where it wants to, it might want to anyway, install the uh, the new version. So, yep, let's go ahead and apply the update for the uh, update manager. So you can go ahead and uh, do that. And then while that's working, we also have a notification system. Again, in response to user, uh, user requests, they made it look a whole lot less scary. Like, ah, oh, it's frightening, you know. Um, move that out of the way. That's the software updater. So this guy over here, let's see, there's your update manager. Here's your system report. So install language packs. I'm just going to go ahead and ignore the language packs and set up the restore system. Um, and I personally, I'm not a huge fan of time shift, so I just turn that off. It's good to use for some people. Uh, so here we have the updates available in the last couple days. That's going to be all the same as Farron OS as well. So as far as your options and your layouts, this does not give you quite as many web browser choices out of the box. There's no easy web browser manager, but as you look through the menu, it is a little bit more cleaned up in that it, it doesn't have a lot of the extra tools and utilities. Now, again, that is a concern of Plasma itself where Plasma at times is known to be a little bit hard on the settings because it's like there's so many settings you can get lost and that would be something that Farron could fall into as well with a lot of extra settings. Where do you update the web browsers? Where do you update this, the accent colors and things like that? And uh, in reality here, it's a lot more streamlined because Linux Mint's not trying to be every layout. It's not trying to be uh, the perfect for every single computer user. It's like we want to come with something that's very familiar to your Windows users without compromising the functionality. And so it's clean, it's simple, and that's really one of the reasons I like it. It also is a, a full utility, which of course a lot of these things, some people look at that and say, oh, that's bloat. A character map? Who uses that? I'm the geek that uses a character map, okay? I like the character map. I'm glad it's here. Now there's other stuff on here I find useless, like Redshift. I, I do not buy into this whole blue colors at night makes you bad at sleeping. I stare at computer monitors all day long. I have no problem going to sleep at the end of the day, folks. <laughs> so, uh, so that is kind of bloat on my production systems. I use it, eh, uninstall, uh, but that's okay. Uh, as far as uh, uh, other software, very similar, full software suites. Uh, we have here, we have uh, Rhythmbox instead of VLC. Um, so uh, Farron OS has VLC, which covers video and, uh, and music but it's a little bit heavier. This one here uses uh, celluloid for your movies and videos and rhythm box for your music, which are both a little bit lighter. We do have under graphics, we have the drawing instead of your, um, your Krita. So like Krita and GIMP are excellent, excellent programs, but they're also very advanced for your basic user. This is basically like um, Windows Paint. Uh, very simple. That's why they swapped that one out. You can still install GIMP or Krita, no big deal. They've given us Thunderbird instead of, um, uh, oh, what's the one they were using over in Farron? 
so there's a there's um, a few small systematic changes. Now I'll point out two applications that are brand new to Linux Mint. One of these is Hypnotics. This will allow you to watch live TV programs around the world uh, through streaming. And the other one is the Web Apps tool, which will allow you to create uh, containerized website applications, adding them to the menus and, and whatever else. So both excellent choices. Uh, which one of these is going to be your absolute best choice? Well, honestly, you're not going to go wrong with either one of these. They're both fabulous distributions. I personally like Linux Mint. It's uh, It doesn't give me overkill as far as our colorations. It doesn't give me overkill as far as just anything as far as options. Like I don't need a Cupertino layout. I don't need the Redmond layout. I don't need all these different layouts. I'm happy with, this is how we look out of the box. Here's what we get. And we don't get lost in settings. That's why I like Linux Mint. But for a person new to Linux wanting a, a better, broader experience, Farron does bring a lot of things to the table. It brings to the table the ability to choose which layout that you want. It has the a, an easier choice of figuring out your, your websites. And I believe the accent colors are all there. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, they were in a different spot than I was looking for. And that was something that he corrected me on um, in between our, our two video clips. Uh, and also, I did say I would ask about Edge. I didn't hear a specific response about Edge, but he did say that the web browser, um, the web browser installer, is on life support until the new version of the Farron Store comes out. So that's something to look forward to. It's something great coming on down the pipeline. So there we have it, guys. Um, excellent, two excellent distributions. You're not going to go wrong with either one of them. Both of them are great. My personal preference: I use Linux Mint on most of my production computers. Uh, and so I just, I absolutely love it. Um, it just works perfect for me. It's exactly what I was looking for coming to Linux. Uh, Farron OS though is also just an excellent distribution. So have them um, have a look at both of them. And, uh, as he says on his website, Farron says on the website, if you're not sure if it's going to work best for you, you are very welcome to download a copy of it, put it on a USB drive and you can run the computer on that USB drive for a while until you're comfortable with it. And you can do the same with Mint as well and most Linux distributions. So uh, that's kind of my, my final take on that. And uh, with that, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and leave this here. Let me know your favorite one of the distributions here or other distributions I should be looking at in future editions of Distro Wars. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.